Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about common CLI commands, some of the shorthand commands, setting up interfaces, uh, putting passwords and encrypting them, adding host names and banners, and getting remote access to the VTY line with Telnet. In the description, I'm going to put the times for this, so if you want to skip to a particular part, you can. So these are some of the common commands, and I included some of the shorthand versions of them, like configure terminal is conf t. Uh, all the little stars are actually where you would put your individual whatever, so they're not actually part of the command, they're just what you add after. So we have banners and service password encryption and showing running config, line vty0, line console0, um, and an exit, I putting adding an IP address, and I, I included a few of the um, controls in there too, control A, control E, tab, and control shift 6. Let's get started. So I've already gone ahead and started with, I put a, the IP addresses on here, and I put what the numbers are already specifically, so you just can go along with what I have. We're starting with Antigone, or router 1. I'm going to go ahead and get into the config line. We're going to start with the interface for that network. 192.168.10.0, that network, with our three computers. Now this is a regular just slash 24 interface you know, slash 24 network, so just going to be regular there. We're going to go ahead and do our serial line now for our to connect our routers. And I've used a slash 30 for my WAN, so it's not going to be the same. It's going to be 252 at the end. But um, I just normally use the up arrow most of the time and then change the previously made commands. I find that to be a lot easier. And so I'm using dot five there because that's the one that I have put for this interface. As a slash thirty, there are only two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put a description on it. Now description is the actual keyword. Anything after description is actually what is going to be the description when you look at the line. And link to Calliope because it is the link to the other router, Calliope. And since I didn't do it on the interface to my switch and uh, to my other network, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I'm just going to put that it's the link to that network. Now, in working in this, if you use exit, it only goes back one. But if you use end, it actually goes back twice. So from config, if I'll often just use end. Copy run start to save what you've done, and then we'll go on to the next router. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing here, just with, you know, the different names and the different uh, IP addresses for the interfaces. Now, my other network, my, my 10 network over here, is actually a slash 27, so I'm using the subnet that ends in 224 instead of a zero. So if you put, uh, if you have to pay attention to your slashes, if your slash is a different number than the regular 24, then it will be a different subnet. Now working in this one, this serial, this is actually the side that has the clock on it. I did forget at first to add the clock rate, but you do have to add the clock rate only on one side when you're dealing with serial connections between two routers. You have to put the clock rate on the side that actually has the clock. Okay, now I'm going to use the command show IP interface brief so that I can look at all of my interfaces. As you can see, my serial line is up and so is my gigabit ethernet line 00. zero. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. As you can see, everything is green, all of my interfaces are up, and we can get started on the next one. Okay, 
The next thing that we're going to do after putting up all of our interfaces is we're going to start putting our passwords and their encryptions onto these interfaces and onto the line. To put a password on the privilege exec mode, you have to actually go into a config. You have to go into global config mode to do it. You can either put enable password and then you put the password or what I did is enable secret and then the password and that makes it an encrypted password. What happened there was that I typed in end when it didn't have enough things to end and so it got stuck looking for something and I actually used uh, control shift 6 to get out of that. Now here I'm having trouble with my password and that's because I forgot that I used a capital C for Cisco and you got to pay attention to that. Capitals do matter when you're putting these these passwords on here. It took me a minute but I figured it out. So here uh, I go ahead and I put the password Cisco with the capital and it works. Now that we've gotten through that, we're going to go ahead and put passwords and encryptions on our uh, VTY lines and our console line. Command for that is line console zero. And then we're going to go in there with just password and I'm going to use Cisco again. And then you use login. Then we go into line, VTY, zero, and then four. And the reason you do that is there's actually there's 16 lines, but the number only goes up to 15 because the zero actually counts as one. So when you put zero and then four, you're actually like telling it to go from number zero to number four. So you're, you're doing those certain particular lines. So then just like before, you go and you do password. And I'm doing again Cisco and login. You got to remember the login on both of these. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and go back one to, to global config. I'm going to put in service password dash encrypt. It's actually password dap dash encryption, but you can just leave it as encrypt and it knows what you're doing. So now we have a password on both our VTY lines up to four and our console line and they are encrypted. I'll go ahead and show you that. Now the full command is actually show run and config, but if you type in show run, it works. And then you just keep hitting enter to get more. As you can see, it says enable secret. And then there's that for the uh, our VTY line and our console. And you can see they are also encrypted. Okay, so after we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and do our host names and our banner. So we go ahead and we get in here and you can see it asks for a password. And then it asks for a password. There you go. It asks for a password on both. VC privilege and console have a password. Now to do a host name, you have to be in global config. Most things you have to do have to do from global config. Now we're gonna do host name, it's the command, and then you type in the host name. Um, my host name for this router is Antigone. So there you go. Now the name is Antigone. We're gonna go ahead and put a banner on it. You're just gonna go ahead and put banner OTD. Now you use the hashtag to tell it which part of it is the actual words because anything between the two hashtags is not considered a command. So you can type anything between there and it will work. So you put your little hashtag. I went ahead and put no unauthorized access. And so you begin with a hashtag and you end with a hashtag. I'd like to note at these points that almost all of these things you can actually do also on the switch as to the host names and the banners and the passwords you can do them on the switch and it's pretty much the same bands and the uh, user exec mode privilege exec mode global config mo almost all the same so as you can see at the beginning now we now have our banner this is no unauthorized access allowed now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to do the same thing on the other router So now I'm going to go ahead and make it possible for you to um, access the uh, VTY lines. I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm going to show you how to set up so that you can remote access, say, from uh, Orpheus over there, that server, to Antigone's router. I'll go ahead and show you that. Going to command prompt. And I'm going to try and telnet into... Antigone. And it's actually not going to work. 
Now, the reason for that is actually because Orpheus has absolutely no ability to contact Antigone. See, we haven't actually set up any routes from Calliope to Antigone from those two networks to each other. So, while Calliope and Antigone are directly connected as routers, the, the networks that are connected to either side of them are not connected. So, you can't access it. Now, I'm actually going to go ahead and go into Eurydice. That is the computer on the other side. And um, this time I'm going to tell Net into uh, Eurydice's own router, which is Antigone. This time we're going to have a little more success. As you can see, there you go. Password, banner, all that. That is because Eurydice is actually directly connected to that router, so she can access. There you go. I have access to Antigone from Eurydice. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and set up uh, the IP routes some static IP routes on these two routers so that I can go ahead and show you remote access. Now for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this directly from the command prompt on the actual computer. This is because you can do all the same things that you can do in the CLI on Packet Tracer actually in command prompt. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the IP route. Now I did actually make a mistake here. Uh, I didn't realize it at first and it took me a moment, but I had put the, um, the actual IP address on the, of the interface for Calliope that leads to Orpheus, the server. But you're supposed to put the network, not the interface. So that was my bad. So there you go. I figured it out. So um, you got your network. You got the subnet for that network. And remember, it's a slash 27. So it's a 224. And then I have my next top address, which from Antigone to Calliope would be the dot six. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that and show IP route. There it goes. You got your static route right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other side too, so you can come back. So I'm going into Orpheus. I'm gonna go ahead and, as you can see, I've accessed uh, my own router on here, Calliope. I'm gonna go ahead and, and this time I remembered to use the network instead of the interface. Go me. All right, so now that we have our two IP routes set up on either side, we have all of our interfaces up and everything's good to go. We're gonna go ahead and this time I'm using Haymon. I'm going to ping the other network or the server on the other network and I'm gonna make sure that that works and we have a reply. Yep, there we go. So we can already, we already know that the routes work because we can talk to the other server, we can talk to Orpheus. And uh, from here, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get into the router Calliope from this computer. And yep, there you go, success. There's our banner, there's our password. Gonna go ahead and log in. There you go, there's Calliope. All right, there you go. Now you can remotely access your uh, routers from your VTY line. Excellent, excellent. And so uh, you would be able to do that from any computer. Who knows how far away Antigone and Calliope actually are from each other. You could remotely access that router and make changes. All right, here, I'm actually showing you guys here um, some of the control functions that you have, the short keys. I have typed out this thing and you can see I'm using control A to go to the beginning of the line instantly and control E to go to the end. So control A for the beginning, control E for the end, and then I'm gonna show you guys. Uh, so you start typing something and if you just type like for example CON and you hit tab, nothing happens because there's too many options there. Um, there's actually more than one command that starts with CON, but if you do CON F and you hit tab, you actually get conf and then if you add a T, it'll go ahead and give you terminal. So the tab key just finishes commands for you if you have enough of the command written up. And you also, by the way, can just use the question mark to find out what you can do on a line or in a mode. All right, guys. That's the last thing that I'm gonna talk about in this video, and that's the end of it. Next time I'm gonna try and do a few videos about subnetting, and it's a lot of fun, you know, once you know how to do it. All right, bye guys.